Hello, Senior 2. We're back again with our first lesson. We'll learn some basic concepts. This year, our curriculum is very interesting. We were going to learn a new tech. Actually, we're going to create our target in this year is creating a computer side dictionary. So, we will learn in this semester or this chapter how to use the PHP programming language and of course how to create and use a database MySQL and we will learn some basic concepts before, before we go to these parts. Let's start with some of our basic concepts and it's called a freeware. What is a freeware? A freeware is a free program. You can get it without permission, of course, and you can get it for free without any charges. Like most the apps you download in your mobile phone is considered as a freeware. You download it for free, you don't have a permission, and you don't need to get one, of course, and you don't need to pay any charge for this software. The second part is an open source program. Of course, we have a two classification when we talk about program, an open source and closed source. As we said before in middle one, and closed source is a program that you cannot access to its source code. What is a source code? A source code means the programming language it's used to create this app or the program, sorry, or the programming language created this app, you cannot access to its code. That's a closed source. In the open source, no, actually it's a program allows the user to open the source code and you can edit or modify or republish after editing it. And most all the open source program is considered as a freeware, but not a not every freeware program considered as an open source. You will find a free program or a freeware is not an open source and it's considered as a closed source, such as your Facebook app. Yes, it's a freeware, but it's not an open source. You can access to its source code. You can access to the code that was written to create this program. And of course, when you deal with a website, you have two types of web pages. You have a static web page, you have a dynamic web page. The only difference between both, you will find first the programming language that created this web page and how the user interacts with the web page itself. In case of we are talking about a static web page, it's just a page of display certain kind of information and display various type of data such as text, numbers, videos, table, hyperlinks and so on. And it must take the extension HTML. Why is that? Because to create a static web page you need a programming language such as HTML and this abbreviation stands for Hyper Text Markup Language like this web page. If you look at this web page, just display a certain data, certain information, such as text, such as links, such as images, and of course you will find the extension of the web page is .html. This means it's a static web page created by using a programming language called HTML or aka hypertext markup language. But when we talk about a dynamic web page, yes, of course it's the same. It's a page display a certain information, but it's written in a different programming language, such as PHP, such as HP.net, and such as JavaScript. You already studied JavaScript with me, middle two, but in this year we're going to study a new tech, a new programming language, a PHP. The dynamic, why we call it a dynamic? 
We call it a dynamic because it's an interactive web page. The user can interact with, such as the Facebook website. In the Facebook, any web page, the Facebook is a dynamic web page. In any web page inside the Facebook, the user can interact with. He can upload a post, he can upload a picture, he can share a post. So you interact with the website. It's not just a web page that display a certain information. No, it display a certain information, yes, and it display a various type of data, such as the text, numbers, video, hyperlinks, and images, and so on. But the user also can interact with. And of course, if you have a dynamic web page, you must have a code executed on server. You must publish or host your web pages on server. And you will need such a service such as using the username or a password field inside this web page. In Facebook, when you sign in, you will find a username, you will find a password, and this process executed on server. It doesn't execute it locally. But in the static, you don't have this field. You don't have the code written to create this process. That's why we call it a dynamic. The user can interact with. Of course, in server, you have two types of server. You may find a two types of server, a hardware server or a software server. Let's start knowing what is a hardware server. A hardware server actually is a physical machine, something you can touch. That's why we call it a hardware, a physical machine, but not like any device you use in your home. It's a device that has technical or high technical specification and high requirement and of course it control each device inside your network that's why we call it a server it serve more than one device it serve all the devices inside your network but the other thing or other type is a software server in this type of server you will need to know the following you have many type of software server. You have the first type is a web server and a web server from its name, it's actually a, just a computer that stored the website pages. We use this web server to store your website pages and that's what we will need it in our project. The other type is a print server you may use it in your institution in your company the print server is a computer connected to a certain printer and controls the printing process inside it or controls the printing process that done by other devices in the same network he control it all who will print first who will print last and that kind of things the third type is a mail server. Of course, you know emails. A computer that stores emails inside your network is considered as a mail server. We have many types of software server, like we said. We have the web server, we have the print server, we have the mail server. The fourth and last but not least, of course, the database server is store the database of your network. Each network must contain a certain database to store and control operation inside the, the network. Of course, the database server store this database and control the other operation inside the network that done by a certain devices. You have four types. Don't forget those four types is very important. And when you deal with any website, you, will, you must find something called a script. 
A script is just a certain piece of code, a small piece of code written using one of the programming language that we use to create a web pages. Why we use the script? A script has some tasks or process or functions. One of those script, you have two types, a client server side or a server side language. You have a client side or server side programming language. In the client side, you have an example. I will give you a small example. In any registration form, you can't leave a certain field empty. Let's say, for example, you are signing up to create a Facebook account. In the registration form, he will ask you your first name, your last name, your email, your password, and so on. You can't leave any of those fields empty. Once you leave it empty, an error message will be displayed that this field is required to contain a certain data. In this case, it's a client site. In the and in the client side, we use a VB script or Java script. That's why we call it run at client. It only runs in your PC. In your PC. You don't need to go to a server to check a certain information. It only run in your PC. That's why we call a client side. Or let's say it between me and you, a user side. In the server side, it's different. Of course, different in programming language, different in the example. In the programming language, you will use a programming language such as PHP or ASP.NET. But it executed on server. This operation executed on server, not locally like the client side. Let's say, for example, when you sign in for Facebook, you will insert your username or your email and you will insert your password. Once you click the sign in button, he will go to the server to check if there is a user has the name that you inserted and if your password is correct or not. Let's say, for example, your password is incorrect. If it's incorrect, a message will be displayed for you containing this sentence username or password is incorrect this operation was done on server that's called a script he checked for something a code used a certain language or a certain programming language to do some task for the user of course it could be run at client or it could be run at server. Don't forget the hypertext markup language and the personal home page, this PHP and this HTML. We will already learn it in HTML and we will use it this year also beside or alongside PHP or personal home page. This programming language is used to create a static web page this programming language is used to create a dynamic web pages or websites. And when we talk about a dynamic, I told you, if you have a dynamic website, you must have a server. Of course, you have also the Apache server. When you create any website or any dynamic website, you must have a server. To create our server, to create our project, we will use something called Apache server. This Apache server app or tool, we will use it to convert our PC into a server. To translate the code written in PHP and to host it locally, to host our website locally. So after that, we could publish over the internet and check our 
of course, result. When you publish your website, you need first to convert your PC into a local host, then you will go to any domain to host your website by booking a URL or a web address, a uniform resource locator like this website. This is an organization, this is a company, uh, sorry, this is a country, Egypt, and of course this is the name of our website and this considered as a full web address or URL. That's why in publish a website we need two phases. We need a local host, a program or a tool that will convert our PC into a server to make it as a local host and we will need to book a URL for our website. After this, you will get to learn what is a MySQL server. A MySQL server is just an application for relational database management system. We use it for any database management system. And the SQL, the structured query language, is the programming language that we use to deal with database and to manage with database. And when we talk about managing database, you have maybe insert data, select your data, update your data, edit or modify or delete data inside your database. So you need to know the SQL programming language or structure query language this language is particularly to deal with database. So don't forget, we will learn a lot of things. We will use to create our website, to a web server package. The first thing we will install an Apache server. And of course, inside it, we will install MySQL. Apache server is for converting our PC into a local host or a server and the MySQL is, is your database. So you will need posts. And you have packages, application, tools. You can use it. We will use this application, ZAMP, because ZAMP run on any operating system. But each one of those packages run on different or specific operating system. This one run on Linux, you will find it inside Apache, you will find it MySQL, and you find it a PHP programming language. In case of WAMP, you have a Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. In case of MAMP, you have a Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. In case of ZAMP, you have XOS mean any operating system. The Apache server, MySQL, a PHP, and a programming language called Perl. So we will use the ZAMP program. This one is very important packages you will need to learn. A session. What is the meaning of session? It's on a class. No, of course it's not on a class or a session that you take inside the classroom. Actually, it's a way to store information about the user. Once you insert your username, your password, when you sign in for Facebook, actually it's stored inside the memory. That's called a session. It's open a new session once you start logging in Facebook. It creates a session. This session is stored temporarily in the computer memory. Once it full, of course, it will restart the session over and over. And sometime it made a logout from your account. You will find this example, of course, in your life, mostly in Facebook. So if you have any questions about this topic, our first topic, feel free to ask at any time. I'll be there for you. Thank you for listening, senior two. Bye. Goodbye.